Hi, I'm Sharla. And I'm Christy. And today we are talking about some very serious freezer meals. They are gourmet freezer meals. You might be surprised to know that freezer meals don't just have to be chili, lasagna, soups, stews, and casseroles. They can be restaurant worthy that you would be proud to serve guests. Absolutely they can, and those are some of our favorite kinds. And so we're excited to share these recipes with you today. A little while back, we did a fancy foodie food freezer meals video. And, oh, and before that, we did a restaurant inspired freezer mm -hmm. meals video. And I think more and more people are surprised to learn that freezer meals can taste amazing and be something like Christy said, that you can be proud to entertain with and that you can really elevate. <laughs> they really so. are a little more upscale and we have some awesome recipes to share with you today. And yes, if you're wondering, we will still be doing some of those casseroles and soups and stews because there is a place for those in homes across North America and the world, but these ones are just, if you're looking for a little bit more gourmet, these are for you. This one is a creamy white chicken enchilada. It is a wonderful, rich dish. You don't understand the amount of cream and a cheese that is happening here. In fact, the first time I had it, I thought, oh, this might be a little too rich. In small doses, no. It is not too it's rich. so good. You might still want to make a salad on the side of this one. <laughs> yeah, just to, just to lighten things just up Just to lighten little. things up a bit. But if you were looking for homey and deep and comforting, this is your dish. The first time we made this was actually, we were doing um, individual freezer meals with rotisserie chicken. So like meal prep with rotisserie chicken. I can put a video for that mm -hmm. there if you're interested in that. And Christy and I, when she was making it, like it just looked and smelled so good mm -hmm. that we couldn't wait. And so we put some of it into a container and put it in the oven like that day so we could try it. And we were correct. It is so flavorful. It is scrumptious. It is <laughs> tasty. It is tasty. I and have since made it as a lunch because we did the individual mm -hmm. portions. I've since made it for a lunch for myself when I'm working from home and it, oh, it did not disappoint even after it was frozen and, you know, reheated. It's so amazing. I haven't had the ones that I took home yet for my lunch and I gave some to my mom Ooh. because she has moved into a retirement place and while there is food available there for her, it is also nice for seniors to have individual sized meals so that they have a little bit more variety in their day-to-day -day cooking. Because sometimes it's hard to cook for one person. Mm -hmm. So we do do a fair amount of individual meals. And so I haven't heard from her yet if she's had it or what she thinks of it. But I think it will be a positive response. Mm -hmm. To start out, we are going to take a medium bowl. We're going to add in shredded chicken. As we said, we got this from rotisserie chicken. We're going to add in some shredded cheese, some softened cream cheese, some onion powder, and some cumin. We're going to get busy with our elbow and mix until it's well combined. Then we are going to make our enchiladas by just scooping a little bit of chicken mixture into the center of our flour tortillas, rolling them up tightly, and place them into our baking dish. Make sure that they are seam side down and that your dish is greased a little bit because of the flour tortillas. You can use these in a large casserole dish or the little guys, just make sure that you cover them nice and tightly before freezing. We're going to also make some sauce. On the stove, we're going to melt some butter and we're going to add in cornstarch or flour. <laughs> we're gonna make a roux. We're going to add in our chicken broth and some sour cream and salsa verde. This is a really great, flavorful, thick and creamy sauce. We're going to add the sauce on top of our enchiladas and sprinkle some more cheese on top as well. I'm gonna cover these with foil and put them in your freezer. On the day that you go to cook, you will want to thaw them and you can bake them uncovered in your oven for 20 to 30 minutes until your sauce is bubbly and the cheese has melted on top. Then you can transfer it to your broiler and let that cheese 
crisp up and darken and bring out that caramelization and flavor. You want to let it cool a little bit before you eat it because these will be hot like lava, but enjoy. They are so good. Like, I'm so glad. We've been talking about adding a white chicken chili enchiladas mm -hmm. to our repertoire for a while, and I'm so glad we did it. Oh, yes. This tandoori chicken is a recipe that we first tried in one of our mega sessions. If this is your first time joining us, Christy and I are neighbors and friends who have really our friendship grew because of freezer meals mm -hmm. and we've been making meals together for over 11 years we make enough at a time to feed both of our families for three months and so we call those the mega sessions they are because they are mega they sessions are mega. <laughs> our last one we made 153 freezer meals it's true and so this one i think came from the time before that whichever mm -hmm. one it came from i'm going to link it up there so that you can watch one of those crazy mega sessions Make sure you pop some popcorn and make yourself like some tea or something because those videos are long, <laughs> but they're kind of fun. And it's one of those, I feel like some people watch them because they want to make freezer meals and they really want to know how and we share a lot of tips. Some people watch them because it's kind of like watching one of those freak show things. <laughs> <laughs> you know, where you're just like, this can't be happening. I think it's just... Sometimes nice background noise where you go around your your day and but you have your TV on or in this case your computer or your tablet and or now you can watch YouTube on TV I suppose and you just go about your day and and you hear a bit of oh they're gonna make tandoori chicken I'm gonna watch that right now and then you continue about your day and for just background noise or we are straight up entertainment which is kind of surprising to us we always get a chuckle out of that one but. You know, we're glad to be showing up glad in your to be homes in this your way. Living rooms. <laughs> <laughs> so this tandoori chicken in your large freezer bag, you're going to put your boneless, skinless chicken breasts, and then in a bowl, you're gonna mix together some yogurt, just plain yogurt, some lemon juice, olive oil, paprika ginger now we like to use the squeezy tube ginger because it's still got that great fresh taste but the work is done for you then some garlic that's minced again we use garlic from a jar because of the same reason it just saves us time and we think it's good enough for what we need it for then some curry powder and chili powder once you mix those together, you're going to pour that over your chicken and squish it gently to coat your chicken. Remove the excess air from your bag because when you're freezer cooking, air is what's going to cause your freezer burn. And so you always want to be extra sure that you remove all the air that you can. You're going to seal it and freeze it on the day you go to make this. You're gonna thaw it and be sure to allow enough time that this can marinate for at least two hours. Then you're gonna discard your sauce and barbecue it over high heat or pan fry it in a skillet. Either way, you wanna make sure that your chicken reaches an internal temperature of 165 degrees. This one would be so nice served with couscous, rice, wild rice, mm -hmm. um, and then some side vegetable dishes. It's just a nice, nice one. I would probably do this one with peas or edamame beans with the rice. Totally, that sounds really, really good. This next recipe is chili lime cod. We do make it a fair amount, and funny enough, this is one that we take camping. We have wrapped it up into foil packets with beans before because they can be cooked over the campfire. I camp in a fancy trailer and I will cook, I will pan fry it in my skillet. And I cooked mine over the fire. And she cooked hers over the fire. Um, and, and it is good. It's so rich in flavor and there is some real heat to this and it is delicious. So we are gonna start out with our cod in the bag you can also use snapper if you like, but really you could use this with any kind of white fish. If you're a bassa person, a tilapia person, you went and caught a jackfish. Really, you could do this. We are going to add into the bag lime juice, olive oil, minced garlic, chili powder, a little bit of brown sugar, paprika, 
pepper and seasoning salt. We're gonna mix these all around right in the bag so that we don't have to use a bowl and make more dishes for ourselves. We're going to remove the excess air from the bag, seal it up and freeze it. On the day of cooking, you can cook this on the barbecue, you can do this in the oven, or as I said, you can pan fry it and you can cook it in a tin foil packet over your campfire and you can have gourmet food while you are camping. You sure can. I have taken lots of our salmon recipes camping mm -hmm. with us before and we go as a large, large group with my husband's family. And so people kind of wander over from other campsites yes. when they smell things. And the Dr. Pepper pulled pork, I bring my slow cooker with me, which I know not everyone has a slow cooker when they're camping, but, um, and that's another one where the smell just like mm -hmm. brings people from neighboring campsites yes, over right. like, what you making? And of course, that one's large enough that I can offer it to the world. So yeah, like, you can. That is definitely a large a family recipe. <laughs> sure <laughs> is. That's right. Uh, this is also a great one to serve with rice, but really you could serve it with anything. I think it would be really nice with some baby potatoes and some asparagus. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That would be great. This recipe may just be my very favorite soup that we have. Uh, there's a few that compete for that title. We and do have some good yeah, soups. <laughs> there's like one that might rise up a little because in the winter, like the dead of winter when it's super cold, we've got this spicy sausage zucchini soup that mm -hmm. you put pasta in and it's got carrots and it's just like, it's so hearty. And it warms you up on the in, from the inside out, but in more ways than one because it's, it's spicy. It, there's some heat in it, and oh, it's great soup. So sometimes, like in on the cold winter days, that one might rise up <laughs> and knock this one down. But this one is a really great fall soup, yes. right? Like the leaves are turning and it's brisk. It's sweater weather. This one is perfect for the fall. This is our curried butternut squash soup, and you are not going to believe the flavors in this. This is 100% restaurant quality. In fact, it's better than any of the squash soups I've eaten in a restaurant. And I like squash soup, so I try it anytime I see it on a menu. So that's saying a lot. That is saying a lot. Into your large freezer bag, you're going to add sweet potato that's cubed into one inch chunks, butternut squash that's cubed into one inch chunks, some olive oil, minced garlic. Again, you're just going to use it from your jar. Some minced onion and ginger from the squeezy tube again. Then you're going to add in some curry paste and here's where you can take a little bit of liberty with this recipe. If you like things spicy, you're gonna add a spicy curry paste. If you like them milder, you add a mild curry paste. So that's entirely up to you. Then you're gonna add in some cumin, a little bit of salt and pepper and some vegetable or chicken broth. If you wanna make this vegetarian, of course, you're just going to use a vegetable broth. Then you're going to get the air out of your bag, seal it and freeze it. On the day you go to cook this, you're gonna thaw it and just dump the bag contents into a large pot and add two cups of water. You're going to bring it to a boil, stirring it here and there, and then you're gonna turn your heat down to low and simmer it until your sweet potato and squash are nice and soft. Run an immersion blender through this so that it is smooth and delicious. And the thing about this soup is it tastes and feels like there's cream in here, but there's not a drop of dairy. This is gluten-free, dairy-free, healthy, all the things. If you want, you could add like a dollop of some sour cream or crema on there, which then would make it not dairy-free, but it's great on its own. You could also add some fresh herbs on top, like some fresh cilantro, but this is such a good one. It really is. And if you are somebody who like me is a little bit hands off with the curry, I used to be, I used to really struggle with curry food in general until I met Charlotte and we started, I started expanding my palate a bit, I guess, because she has quite the expanded palate. And I eased you, you in. You eased me in. 
You really, really did. And actually, this next recipe is how you trapped me. Yes, but I will say that this butternut squash soup isn't super curry. Mm -hmm. You know, it isn't overpowering. Butternut squash is definitely the star of this show. The curry just is a layer of flavor, just like anything else in there. It does give it some warmth, but I promise you, it is not super curry. This next one, again, has some curry in it, is not super curry. It is, and this is the one I trapped her with. <laughs> she totally trapped me with this recipe. It is seafood curry pasta. There is a lot going on in this recipe and it is all just good. So in our large bag, we are going to add in some thinly sliced onion, some sliced mushrooms, sun-dried tomatoes that have been drained and chopped. Make sure you get the kind in the oil, not the dried ones in the package and make sure that they're chopped. They can be a little bit overwhelming when they are left whole. We're going to add in some curry powder, some pineapple juice, which is a bit of a surprise ingredient, but it does just brighten up the whole dish. Some cream of mushroom soup, which makes it sound like it's not so gourmet-ish. However, it blends in nicely. It adds some substance to the meal. It helps season it a little bit, and there's already mushrooms in there anyway. We're gonna also add in some evaporated milk because I'm gonna tell you something. When you are cooking with freezer meals, the heavier the milk product you use, the better it's going to freeze. Milk itself tends to freeze poorly when you are cooking with it because when you thaw it, it will separate. Evaporated milk is already processed a little bit, so it does freeze nicely. Heavy cream freezes nicely. Sour cream, um, butter, cheese, yogurt, those things freeze fairly well. Milk itself, not so much. So you will find if we are making something that has milk in it, one of the things we do to freezerize it, freezer mealize it, if you wanna make it into a verb, is to substitute in that uh, um, evaporated milk, just so you know. And we're going to squish all those around nice and gently. We're going to seal up that bag, get all the excess air out. And then in another bag, we are going to add in scallops, just in a quart size, medium freezer bag. And then yet in another bag, we're going to add in the shrimp. You're going to get the excess air out. You're going to seal up those bags, staple them together so they all stay together in your freezer, and then you freeze it. On the day of cooking, you'll see why we have the scallops and the shrimp separate. We're gonna start out with our large bag. We're going to get it into a large pan and get that nice and bubbly, get those flavors melding. In the meantime, you're going to cook up 12 ounces of penne pasta because we're going to drain it and put it in at the end so that's bubbling away your curry is bubbling away the scallops and the shrimp have different cook times the scallops really are about you know 10 to maybe 12 minutes and the shrimp is like five to seven minutes when it's in a sauce so we're going to drain and add the scallops and then a few minutes later you're going to drain and add your shrimp they should all be cooked at the same time you add in your drained pasta and voila, you have seafood curry pasta, and this is restaurant quality. It's so good. We like to sprinkle some Parmesan on top of mm -hmm. there, and of course, I like to sprinkle red chili flakes on everything, so it definitely makes it onto the seafood curry pasta, but it is, it is really good. Now, when we make it for my family, Christy usually makes this because it's one of her favorite meals of all time, and so she's really fast at making it, she just puts two scallops yes. in my bag. And Charlotte's the only one in her house that likes the scallops. So we're not gonna waste all those. She's like, really, just give me one. I'm very generous and double that. And so I just keep the rest of the scallops for myself because scallops are, this is really one of the few recipes that we have scallops in. They are expensive. And I'm always scared that if I leave them behind in the freezer without them being used, then they don't get used and then they go bad and that is a lot of money down the drain. So I, I just find a way to make them fit in there. There's probably more scallops in mine that, that, that are called for in the recipe. But and, your whole family eats them. Um, you know, my kids are, uh, okay. but it's more for me and my husband and that's okay. The kids just eat around it. They don't seem to mind. Yeah. More scallops for me. <laughs> So I hope we've helped you see that freezer meals can be more than just your casseroles, soups, and chilies. 
Uh, we're gonna put a video right there to those fancy foodie food freezer meals and they are way more elevated even than what we shared today. Just as a preview, we've got a minted pea puree in there mm -hmm. that is made with garden peas and Christie's garden mint. So yeah, that one is pretty darn fancy. <laughs> and that one is extra fancy because how you use it. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spoil that because there is a bit of a surprise. Your plan for these peas is honestly <laughs> kind of hilarious and I love it. Hilarious for freezer meal. <laughs> hilarious for a freezer thought. meal. Not hilarious for getting all dressed up and being fancy and going to a restaurant. You will understand once you watch the video, so I really hope you do. Thank you so much for joining us today. Check out the links below. We're glad to have you here. Happy cooking.